very uncommon disease, a very rare disease, but I'll never forget the patient who said to me, Doc, don't give me this one in a million stuff. For me, I've got it. It's 100%. Ja, ich habe Morbus Fabri, ich bin 58 Jahre alt, ich habe eine Frau, Mara, und ich habe eine wunderbare Tochter mit dem Namen Geraldine, sie ist elf Jahre alt. Tja, ich lebe, wie schon gesagt, in Berlin und äh, habe hier eigentlich ein sehr schönes, privilegiertes Leben. Ich habe dieses Café Einstein in die Welt gerufen, das Kaffeehaus ist äh, ein sehr bekannter Ort geworden weil ich hier auch einen Geschäftsführer habe, der quasi den Alltag der Gastronomie realisiert. Ich kann quasi die künstlerische Arbeit machen und habe dadurch viel, viel Zeit, viel, viel mit meiner Tochter Geraldine. Es ist einerseits der Versuch zu tanzen im Leben, aber es ist andererseits eben auch immer wieder ein dunkler Gang, der mir bevorsteht. Also ich bin hin und her gerissen. Hi, I'm Tracy. I'm 41 years old. I have Fabry's disease. I have two wonderful boys, Josh and Jordan. Jordan has Fabry's disease, and I have a wonderful husband named Louis. We knew that um, Fabry's ran in our family. My father was very sick, and uh, a doctor diagnosed him with Fabry's. And um, I really didn't get no symptoms until I was in my late 20s. And then I started getting the burning in my hands and my feet. When my father was little, around five or six, he used to always cry with pains. And back then the doctors used to say it was growing pains. And so he went through most of his life thinking that it was growing pains. And as he got older and the symptoms got more severe, um, some doctors in the, the hospital diagnosed him with Fabry's. They flew in doctors from the States and that. And, He was one of the very first ones, I think, that was diagnosed with Fabry's here. Meu nome é Adriana. Sou casada com Ari, portador da doença de Fabry. Temos três filhos: Monique, 22 anos, portadora de Fabry. Kaique, 12 anos, e Samuel, 1 ano e 7 meses. Moramos em Tapejara, no Brasil. Quando eu vi, eu estava grávida da minha filha mais velha. Foi uma alegria, foi muito bom. Porque eu achei que ela ia trazer... Criança sempre traz coisas boas, né? Filho é a melhor coisa do, do, do mundo. Quando a Monique começou a ter os sintomas, ela tinha 3 anos. Foi difícil, sabe? Foi muito difícil porque você não sabia até que ponto isso podia afetar ela, se era a mesma coisa. Eu tenho três cunhadas, quatro cunhadas que são viúvas e eu não quero seguir esse mesmo caminho que elas. Eu... O Ari teve até hoje três AVCs maiores e eu sei que a Monique, a história de vida dela vai ser outra. Je m'appelle Alexandra, j'ai 39 ans, j'ai deux enfants, l'un de 12 ans et un autre de 9 ans. Celui de 9 ans est porteur de la maladie de Fabry. Moi aussi j'ai la maladie de Fabry, comme mon papa, comme ma soeur et mon oncle. Je suis infirmière pour enfants, j'habite près de Paris et mon compagnon s'appelle Christian. Quand on m'a annoncé euh, le fait qu'un seul de mes deux fils était atteint, J'étais évidemment très contente que l'un d'eux n'ait pas cette maladie. La question, c'est de savoir le, 
lequel des deux enfants allait avoir cette malchance ou cette chance. Il euh, n'y a pas de choix, on ne peut pas choisir, on... c'est le hasard qui, qui fait les choses. When I first see a new family uh, with Fabre, I'm telling them that uh, they have a defective gene. There is a loss of function of that gene. That is, the enzyme is not functioning anymore. It cannot cut some kind of piece of fat that uh, we call a substrate, um, globotriosylceramide, uh, GL3. If that piece is not cut, the substrate This piece accumulates everywhere, in vessels, especially in vessels. The clinical manifestations include involvement of the kidney organ, involvement of the heart, involvement of the brain, involvement of the peripheral nerves, involvement of the GI system. J'ai commencé à avoir des problèmes de santé euh, vers l'âge de 25 ans. J'ai eu des problèmes cardiaques. À ce moment-là, j'étais infirmière en cardiologie. Donc je connaissais très bien la question. Et en allant un jour au travail, j'ai eu un malaise. Mon père, à ce moment-là, n'était pas diagnostiqué du tout. C'était vraiment dix euh, ans avant qu'il ait le diagnostic. Et les problèmes cardiaques que j'ai eus ne sont pas spécifiques à la maladie de Fabry. Donc personne n'a fait le lien avec ça. Mais la question est, quelle est la sévérité de la maladie de présentation What organs are going to be involved? How soon will they be involved? What's, what's the presentation in terms of the, the patient themselves? J'avais euh, une sensation de brûlure dans les jambes importante, comme euh, si j'avais traversé un buisson de ronces. Euh, C'était un écorché vif. Je ne supportais plus mes pantalons. Je ne supportais plus mes chaussettes. Euh, j'avais qu'une envie, c'est de me mettre en short quand je rentrais chez moi. We call that acroparesthesia. It's strange pains. It's pains in hands and feet that are augmented by changes in temperature and by exercise. And so that they will have some strange pains in their hands, deep pains. And uh, to the point they are unable to do anything except that to try uh, to deal with those types of pains. It could come by uh, for a couple of days, and so we, we call that Fabre crisis. We see variation in families with the same mutation, but they can have different presentations. An um, uh, older brother might have severe heart involvement. Younger brother has no problems with the heart, but has severe kidney involvement. Mon frère était peut-être plus en difficulté que moi sur le plan des, des pathologies. C'était malheureusement plus spectaculaire. Euh, des flébites, des troubles physiques euh, comme ça, ça se voit beaucoup plus que d'avoir mal aux jambes et de se plaindre euh, à sa maman de temps en temps que ben, euh, j'ai les jambes qui me piquent, etc. So all of that is part of the wonder and mystery of this disease but also something that uh, I think is a, uh, not only a challenge, but an opportunity to understand the basic biology and how this affects each individual patient. Typically, when the uh, disease is not recognized, these children um, uh, are, uh, are said uh, to be complaining too much, are said not to go to school uh, with a type of pleasure, and are said to be lazy at sport. And obviously, this is completely false. I can set in the data, more or less. Você via todas as outras crianças correndo atrás da bola. Não que não corresse também, né? Eu ia também. Mas eu dava uma corrida e logo tinha que parar, sentar e me, me segurar por causa da dor, né? E os outros continuavam correndo. Eu esperava passar a dor, depois corria de novo. Ah, meu pai queria que fosse fazer um servicinho, qualquer coisinha. E ela dizia, não, ele não pode. Não, mas como é que o filho do vizinho pode? Não, pode porque não é doente. É a vida dele, é assim, né? Mas eu ressentia, quand même, que 
au fond de moi-même, il y avait quelque chose qui n'était pas tout à fait normal. J'avais des, des maux, j'avais une fatigue un peu particulière. Euh, ce qui me marquait surtout, c'est que quand je faisais... Euh, ben, je, je courais, je m'amusais avec les autres gamins, je, je faisais du sport. J'avais des sensations de la chaleur m'étouffait euh, rapidement, alors que les autres, euh, ils ne le ressentaient pas apparemment. Je pense euh, réellement que ma mère ne se doutait pas que, que j'avais un problème euh, euh, sous-jacent, euh, une maladie. Euh. Donc peut-être que je suis passé un peu à côté de, de, de son regard, mais bon, euh, je l'en excuse parce qu'elle a été patiente, elle était malade. Euh, mon frère était malade et euh, bon, on, on donne ce qu'on peut et c'est pas toujours facile, quoi. No, I never really had a full understanding of what Fabrice was. I just knew I had lots of pain. And I couldn't do, do things like other children could do. Well, when I was a kid, I did play, I did play baseball up to when my, my symptoms started getting more severe. But going outside in the wintertime, I would not go. I wouldn't even attempt it. Als ich auf die Welt kam und die ersten Jahre, habe ich eben unter einem sehr intensiven Brennen in den Händen, in den Füßen gelitten, Magenkrämpfe und kein Mensch wusste, was das im Grunde genommen ist. Äh, viele oder einige der Ärzte haben dann gesagt, ich würde simulieren und das war für mich eben ganz schwierig, auf die Welt zu kommen und Schmerzen zu haben. Mein Vater hat mir schon früh erzählt, was das alles für Schmerzen waren, die er hatte und in den Händen und in den Füßen das Brennen. Und dass er auch oft als kleines Kind immer geweint hat und die anderen wussten nicht warum und er konnte oft nicht zur Schule kommen. Ich, ich denke und ich hoffe natürlich, dass es nicht so schlimm sein wird wie bei meinem Vater, aber ich weiß es eben nicht. Sometimes when they have been diagnosed late, they are reluctant in some way to say all uh, the difficulties in life because nobody listened to them uh, in, in the years. For example, they were complaining of those acroparesthesia, those pains, and it was not diagnosed. And it was said to be in the head. Comme la plupart des gens, j'étais euh, quelqu'un qui ne savait pas qu'il était malade et je n'avais pas de diagnostic euh, sur ma maladie. Dès l'enfance, j'ai quand même commencé à ressentir un certain nombre de problèmes, euh, mais qui étaient toujours étiquetés. Euh, il doit grandir, euh, bon, euh, il a, je sentais des, des problèmes dans mes jambes, mais ça, c'est certainement parce qu'il a fait trop de sport. Bon, il y avait toujours une raison un peu médico-familiale à côté de ça, mais euh, on ne savait pas que j'étais malade. Donc, euh, quand j'étais gamin, j'étais gêné, mais euh, j'y prêtais pas trop attention. Quand je suis devenu un, un homme, bon, euh, euh, je souffrais. Voilà, je souffrais là, je souffrais vraiment. Malheureusement, il y a eu une errance médicale qui a fait que pendant euh, cinq ans environ, on m'a regardé comme euh, quelqu'un qui se plaignait. On est arrivé peu à peu à croire que je faisais peut-être de la simulation. Étant donné que j'étais un simulateur, qu'il fallait que j'aille voir un psychiatre. Alors, euh, moi, je me disais, mais je ne comprends pas parce que je n'ai pas l'impression que, que, que c'est dans ma tête. J'ai l'impression que je ressens bien les choses. Mais euh, quand on arrive à vous convaincre qu'il y a quelque chose qui ne va pas là-haut, eh bien, finalement, euh, on suit. Et da keiner der Spezialisten herausgefunden hat, warum meine euh, Nierentätigkeit immer schwächer wurde, euh, war es natürlich so, dass der Weg gnadenlos sich immer mehr verschlechterte und ich natürlich auch sehr traurig häufig war, niedergeschlagen und meine Frau damals schon, also 96, 97, 98 sagte, wenn es Probleme gäbe und, sie, oder, und wir kompatibel wären, dass ihre Niere mir passen würde, weil wir eine gemeinsame Tochter haben und sie wollte nie ihrer Tochter sagen, müssen, ich hätte deinem, Fa deinem, deinem, deinem Vater helfen können, aber ich habe ihm nicht geholfen. 
No caso da Monique, nenhum médico me acreditou. Ela sempre foi tratada daquele jeito. É mania, é anorexia, é bulimia, é maluca. Precisa de um psiquiatra, vamos internar. Quem sabe se ela internar numa casa de repouso, ela melhora. Eu me sentia mal com isso. Quando os médicos não acreditavam em nós, eu cheguei a duvidar, às vezes. Às vezes até ela mesma duvidava que ela sentia tudo aquilo, porque ninguém encontrava nada. Nós choramos junto muitas vezes, procurando alguma coisa que, que aliviasse aquele sofrimento, sabe? A Monique só se recuperou mesmo quando teve o diagnóstico. Ela descobriu que era portadora de fabre, ela ficou... Pelo menos ela podia dizer para as pessoas, e ela fez questão de voltar em alguns médicos e dizer, olha, eu tenho fabre, não estava mentindo. There's something called the diagnostic journey, which takes patients off in the wrong direction. They go through a whole series of missteps, misadventures, misdirections. When I started to see my doctor who doesn't see anything, we're going to do some examinations, it was really an escalade, little by little, of examinations. So, some examinations simple, some prises of blood, then after it was an IRM, and after it was a biopsy, the muscles and the nerves, after it was a puncture of the lumbar, after I was hospitalized, I was made a bilan for all sorts of things. I was in many hospitals in Paris, in Limoges, in Toulouse, and everywhere I was going, Monsieur, everything is normal. Uh, on comprend pas. Bon. Uh, weil ich an Gerardo die Niere gespendet habe mit der Hoffnung, dass unsere ganzen Probleme bzw. seine Probleme mit der Gesundheit zu Ende werden. Um, als, ich, als ich erfahren habe, dass es war eine genetische Probleme und, uh, und dass, dass, die Gran dass es war eine Krankheit, die, die immer noch weitergehen konnte, uh, da war für mich ein eine Zeit in meinem Leben, wo ich aufgehört habe zu glauben an Gott, Religionen, um allem. Ja, als die Diagnose heraus war, habe ich mich natürlich, äh, tja, kann man gar nicht beschreiben. Ich habe einfach gedacht, wann hört der Irrsinn endlich auf? Denn ich bin gerade aufgewacht äh, aus der Narkose und hatte die Niere meiner Frau in meiner Brust und dann in dem Moment erfahre ich auch noch von Morbus Fabri. Und noch schlimmer war es, ähm, als wir gewusst haben, äh, dass die Krankheit genetisch war und dass sie unsere Tochter das noch erben konnte. Äh, dann haben wir den Test gemacht und als ich gewusst habe, dass Geraldina Morbus Fabri auch hatte, das war das war schlimm. Also also am Anfang war es natürlich schrecklich für die ganze Familie zu erfahren, dass Fabri sozusagen in der Familie lag, dass meine Oma Fabri hatte und die Vorfahren von meiner Oma auch. Und wir haben alle gesagt, das ist einfach so. Wir haben Fabri und wir leben damit und, und wir werden nicht böse sein auf irgendjemanden. Und es ist einfach so, wie es ist und wir können es nicht ändern. Das heißt also, der Täter wurde oder war gefasst, der Körperkrimi, den ich ja mein ganzes Leben durch erlebt habe, äh, war geklärt. O dia que foi feito o diagnóstico, que ligaram, foi por telefone, que nos ligaram falando, olha, todos os pacientes que vieram aqui fazer o exame são portadores de fabre. Foi um misto de alegria. Tristeza, porque a gente já tinha, já sabia um pouco o que era a Fabre, mas a verdade é que a gente fez foi uma festa. A gente reuniu todo mundo aqui, fez um churrasco, agradeceu, riu, chorou. Foi uma mistura de sentimentos. Pelo menos a gente sabia ó, o nome da doença, o que, que a gente tinha. E tinha gente que achava que, que era fingimento e coisa, né? Então a gente. Ficou feliz porque sabia, pelo menos a gente sabe o que, que tem, né? E quando on vous dit um bonjour, como o médecin que fez o diagnóstico de minha maladie, 
monsieur, vous êtes malade, vous avez euh, la maladie de Fabry, ben, paradoxalement, moi j'ai sauté au plafond de joie, parce que j'étais plus un simulateur, c'est lié, j'étais un malade, j'étais un vrai. On me reconnaissait comme patient. This disease is carried on the X chromosome. That's the female chromosome. So if a male who has a single X has the, a mutation, that mutation will be passed to every one of his daughters because his X chromosome goes to every daughter. Now, does that mean they have fibroid disease? Well, fibroid disease has a terrific uh, variety of the presentation. So they could, in fact, be asymptomatic. The female side of the story is, is more interesting, more challenging. Females have two X chromosomes, one normal, one mutated. There's a 50-50 chance in terms of which X chromosome will go to the daughter. Daughters have two Xs, one from dad, one from mom. So the daughters of a woman who has fibroid disease have a 50% chance of having that mutation. The sons have the same story because they can get sons are X, Y, X is coming from mom, Y of course is coming from dad, that's what makes the male. The sons may have the normal or the abnormal X, so it's the same story, a 50% chance. Because it's a familial disease, then you know we can, we can work through the branches of the family for disease ascertainment, disease assessment, surveillance if you will. I was diagnosed after Jordan was, so I knew that well, we all know that the girls have, you know, that we carried it. But um, I never went and got tested until after Jordan was diagnosed and my symptoms started to get more severe. I've only been t um, known to have fab rays for seven years. The rest of my family, I do have some members of my family who, um, who possibly could have fab rays, but they're not ready to, um, they don't accept it yet. They, they have a hard time dealing with it, and um, they don't want to, they just can't accept it. I've seen everything from, I just don't want to know, don't bother me, don't call again, to, oh my God, I knew there was something. Thank, you know, at least we now know what, what it is we're facing, because the whole family has had this issue. Jordan never wanted to have children of his own after he found out about the disease and the stuff like that, that as long as, you know, he didn't have his own children, that the disease would stop. I met my girlfriend, Melissa, in high school. We are high school sweethearts. I try and get him to talk about it because it's something we're going to have to talk about if we decide to have kids one day. I'm going to have to know kind of what I'm getting into if we do have our own children or if we decide to adopt. I need to know if we have our own kids what they'll be going through and things like that. So I think one of the most important things is to have a diagnosis, to know what we're dealing with, and then to go forward, you know, to move forward in your life. I mean, this is true of life in general. If you know what you're up against, you're gonna have a better chance dealing with it than if it's some vague, undefined unknown that, that uh, paralyzes your, your decision-making and your, your life process. <music> C'est vrai que ma mère était toujours quelqu'un qui se plaignait, qui était douloureuse, qui euh, signalait souvent euh, des problèmes dans ses jambes, des problèmes de, euh, digestifs. Bon, en fait, euh, bon, maintenant je me dis, euh, la pauvre, elle a eu euh, la même maladie que nous. So let me speak to you about women with Fabry disease. They have two X chromosomes, obviously. And so one X chromosome is bearing one mutation, and the other X chromosome is completely normal, that is, does not bear any type of mutation. In any cell of the uh, organism, there is only one X chromosome that is expressed, and it could be the mutated X chromosome. And this type of lionization expression is different from organs to organs, so that kidneys may be lionized, that means maybe there will be a lot of cells who will express the diseased gene, and so that will be as sick as men with the disease. 
so that we realize immediately that women are not only carriers, but they are just heterozygous. That means that one X chromosome is normal and the other X chromosome is mutated. So we should not say that women are carriers. We should say that they are at risk to develop the disease as severe as men. And uh, we should be very uh, careful about early manifestations. I've been with Tracy for 10 years. Tracy has February, one of her son, Jordan has February, and the other one, Josh, doesn't have February. I knew that Jordan had February. I started to look on the internet. What was February? After that, I went to all the meetings that we had with the doctors to find out more. Because a lot of time people were talking to us when we went to this February meeting, and people were telling us that the women were carrier. They didn't have the disease, they were just carrier of the disease. Well, we found out later that it is not true. Well, back then they said that girls were more or less just carriers of it, that we would never have any symptoms of the, the disease. And so I really didn't think anything of it when I couldn't, you know, play sports or I didn't do nothing. I just thought it was just me until I got older and realized that girls can have it just as well as the men can have it. I could never really do exercise because my hands and my feet would burn way too much. Um, I never, um, never walked like a, a trail before because I'd never be able to make it. I'd have to take my shoes off halfway through and then after a little bit that wouldn't work no more. They would just get too hot, right? Some call them carriers. I, I don't necessarily like that term because in fact in my belief if you ask the right questions and are very careful in your assessment you'll find that there is involvement in some fashion in almost every patient who has a mutation. Quand on m'a annoncé la maladie euh, à moi, ma première réponse c'était quand faut-il faire le dépistage chez mes enfants On est allé faire les prises de sang avec le papa de Maxime et Adrien. On était déjà pourtant déjà séparés. Le papa de Maxime est médecin. Je suis infirmière pour enfants. On n'avait pas envie tous les deux que ce soit quelqu'un de l'extérieur à la famille, à l'hôpital, qui lui en fasse l'annonce. On... On a d'abord expliqué à Adrien qu'il n'avait pas la maladie, que c'était une très bonne nouvelle, qu'on était très contents. Et puis on a annoncé à Maxime que lui l'avait. Quand on a annoncé à Maxime qu'il avait la maladie, il s'est jeté par terre, sous la table de la terrasse. Il est resté prostré en criant, pleurant quelques minutes en nous disant « mais, mais c'est pas juste, et pourquoi ?»« Pourquoi moi ?» Adrien, il est rentré dans la maison, il pleurait, et lorsqu'on est allé le voir, il pleurait parce qu'il aurait voulu lui être malade et pas son frère. C'était la chose la plus dure que j'ai faite dans ma vie. Jordan was in pain and he would be having a crisis. He'd be um, yelling at me, Mom, I hate you. Why did you ever have me? He didn't understand why he felt the way he did, why he couldn't play with the kids. Um, all he knew was that his hands and his feet really burnt. The pain is so severe and it was just emotional for him. He, he knows that um, I gave him the disease because it's passed on and it's just maybe his anger because he didn't know how to deal with it at the time, so he blamed me. And I said to him, Jordan, I don't blame my father for giving it to me. I said, you know what, it makes us all more of a family. I said, we have something all in common together and we'll always be able to help each other with it. When I was younger, I did blame my mom a lot for what happened to me. And it was, it was pretty bad. I, it was wrong of me to accuse her, like blame all it on her. It wasn't her fault. It was just a genetic thing that passed through the family line. She took the time to come to every single 
doctor appointment I've ever had. Or if I was in the hospital, she would be there and on the cot sleeping next to me. I think Josh felt like an outcast because me and Jordan were always together because it was either me sick or him sick. And Josh was close to my father. And then when my father passed away, Josh felt like he had nobody. It was almost like being shuffled around in a deck of cards just day in to day. You don't know if today's gonna be a good day or a bad day, you know? And it was just being stuck in that kind of motion for a long time. I know they're going through a really hard time and there's nothing you can almost do or even try to go out and out of your way for them. Like, to do so much as get them a glass of water isn't gonna make it go away, you know? It isn't that easy, especially witnessing just, just people go through such a struggle. Wenn wir uns entschieden, ihr die Wahrheit zu sagen, das haben wir gemacht seit dem, seit dem ersten Moment. Symptome hat sie im Moment noch keine. Wir, sie hat natürlich uns bzw. mir gegenüber den Vorteil, dass wir wissen, dass Fabri mit im genetischen, in der genetischen Disposition bei ihr liegt. Und wir gehen sehr offen damit um. Und äh, dadurch habe ich das Gefühl, hat auch sie keine Angst in dem Sinne vor dieser Krankheit, sondern sie hat eine Art, oder es ist etwas Vertrautes, was eben auch ein Bestandteil ihres Körpers ist, mit dem sie leben muss. Und das finde ich, glaube ich, durch die Offenheit, dass wir das sehr gut mit ihr hinbekommen haben. Pensava que para casar geralmente o italiano tem que sustentar a esposa, né? Coisa. Então eu pensava nisso, né? Como é que eu ia fazer? Mas eu, eu no caso, não sabia que eu precisava de uma pessoa que me entendesse e que quando eu precisasse ajudasse a me cuidar, né? Eu acho que fui bem na. Né? Ele me falou, na primeira vez que a gente conversou, ele me falou que ele era uma pessoa doente. Não se sabia que era fabre, ele falou que tinha reumatismo. Quando ele tem crises, eu fico junto o tempo todo. Nunca saio de, de perto dele. Tentamos conversar, amenidades, ou fazer ele esquecer um pouco, o que é praticamente impossível de fazer. Quando a crise de fabre é muito forte, ele é uma pessoa mais explosiva, mais nervosa, sabe? Mas, e quando ele não tem dor, que ele está bem, é uma pessoa muito agradável, amável. Eu acho que conviver com essas, vamos dizer, duas personalidades, assim, é uma coisa de saber levar. O Ari teve até hoje três AVCs maiores. É difícil para ele caminhar. Eu acredito que ele vai melhorar, eu sou uma pessoa muito otimista, eu nunca espero o pior das coisas, sempre o melhor. Agora, dia 18 de fevereiro, nós fizemos 23 anos de casados. E nesse dia ele me pediu desculpas. Ai, agora não posso mais falar. Por, por ser uma pessoa doente. Então eu falei para ele que não precisa. Eu escolhi ele para ficar comigo e não, não precisa pedir desculpa por isso. Christian, c'est mon compagnon actuel. C'est une personne que j'ai rencontrée avant qu'on m'annonce la maladie de Fabry. Et euh, il a vécu l'annonce de ma maladie. Quand on l'a su tous les deux, je lui ai dit « Tu peux encore partir, il est temps. » Il a effectivement pris les enfants sous son aile. Il n'est pas prof d'aviation, il est prof de moto. Euh, alors, est-ce qu'il nous a emmenés sur sa moto, euh, dans son optimisme euh, Je ne sais pas. En tout cas, c'est quelqu'un qui est toujours très positif, qui a toujours envie de rire et de nous emmener rire avec lui. Il vit avec nous euh, la maladie de Fabry. On va aux journées de l'association ensemble. On ne perd jamais une occasion ni de rire ni de plaisanter. Euh, même dans les moments où c'est pas très gai. Louis went through a hard time losing his wife of cancer. Then to get involved with somebody else who was sick takes a lot of courage. Well, at the beginning it was 
hard because I'm not their father. I'm not the one with the pain, but I had to, I had to do something. I used to carry him and take him and put him in the tub in cold water to take the pain from his fingers and his hand and his feet. I would never be able to, I, I don't think there's words that could tell Louis how much me and Jordan appreciate how much he looked after us and what he's done for us. There's no words to say. You don't choose a disease, you don't choose a thing like that. I mean, you, it's a, I, I, it's there, it's there. You have to live with it. I mean, if it's a, if a disease is gonna stop you to love a person, well, it's not a lot. You know, the Fabry patients are a very interesting group. The patients are engaged with each other, both in their family groups as well as in their patient organizations and between themselves. A Adriana é presidente da Associação Gaúcha de Fabry. Nós iniciamos a associação porque, como foi descoberto na nossa família, nós pensamos quantas famílias devem ter com o mesmo problema e não sabe. Era injusto. A associação foi fundada com 13 pessoas, as pessoas da, da família. Hoje são mais de 100. 80 desses são portadores da doença de Fabre. Eu passo muito tempo no telefone com os pacientes. Eu ligo para eles para saber como é que eles estão. Eles me ligam quando tem algum problema ou mesmo para contar alguma coisa boa. Alô? Geralmente, o paciente de Fabre tem essas crises por causa do calor. These families take, and I understand them, some comfort, knowing that they are not alone, and knowing that all the children are suffering from Fabre disease, and also comparing their experience. Agora, você não pode se sentir culpada. Não é esse o momento. Para nunca você deve se sentir culpada. Agora menos ainda. Respira fundo e ajuda ele aí. Coloca ele numa água e depois me liga, tá bom? Eu tô aqui. Vou ficar aqui. Tá? A gente faz porque espera que algum dia, se houver oportunidade, que outras pessoas façam por outras pessoas, né? Zu Fabri habe ich auch, oder zu meinem Fall, ein Buch geschrieben. Uh um eben auch nach außen zu bringen, was es bedeutet, eine seltene Krankheit zu haben. Viele Ärzte gar keine Ahnung haben von den Erkrankungen und deswegen muss man eben schauen, das so öffentlich als möglich zu machen. Und das habe ich mir eben zur Aufgabe auch gemacht, einen Teil meiner Kraft dafür zu wenden, um eben da Aufklärung zu machen. Und das Schöne ist, dass aus dem Buch jetzt ein Film gemacht wird, der dann Millionen von Zuschauern erreichen kann. Mais maintenant, on, on, on parle une langue commune. On s'autorise, je pense, à se parler de ce que l'on ressent au quotidien, sans crainte de gêner, sans crainte d'agacer ou de lasser. Et parfois, on a l'impression qu'on ne peut se comprendre qu'entre nous. I tell every one of my patients that, you know, we are on a, a diagnostic and a therapeutic voyage, and you're part of this process. And we, we can't be satisfied with our current care. We have to push forward. They want to be part of the process. They want to understand the disease. And it's always, this is for my kids. I know that I have this, I've had it, it's, you know, the damage is done, but if we can do something that will benefit my children, that's where I want to be. Jordan can do anything now. He looks up, he's bright, he looks forward to the future. I love watching him go and lift weights. I love watching him, seeing him be able to go and have a job and stuff like that because I never dreamt that he'd ever be able to do any of this stuff. He's accomplished a lot. My greatest hope for the future for Jordan and I is that we get married someday and have a family, whether it be adoption or our own, and that we both get good jobs. We're going to do a lot more now. I'm retired. The kids are gone. We're going to enjoy more life. I hope that uh, she outlives me and uh, she enjoy my pension and all that stuff. 
wir genießen ab jetzt das Leben und, und wir gehen nach vorne. Wir gucken einfach nicht in, in, unseren, in unsere Vergangenheit. Wir wissen, dass es eine Krankheit, Krankheit gibt in unseren Familien, aber dass wir, dass, dass wir müssen versuchen müssen, jeden Tag so, schön, so, so gut wie möglich äh, zu genießen. Ich äh, interessiere mich sehr für die Wissenschaft und für die Forschung. Und ich weiß, dass wir heute Möglichkeiten haben, auch jemand, der eben mit Morbus Fabri auf die Welt kommt, ihm, wenn wir wissen, dass er die Krankheit hat, eben ein einigermaßen gutes Leben zu ermöglichen. On a plus cette liberté de la naïveté, l'innocence, de croire qu'on sera toujours en bonne santé jusqu'à la fin de nos jours et qu'on va s'endormir un jour dans notre sommeil et quand on sera très vieux. On n'a plus cette liberté-là, par contre on a la liberté de vivre chaque instant de manière doublée. It is not like 10 or 15 years ago, first of all you are not alone. And now there's a lot of emphasis about how to solve these types of problems that have been existing for a number of years. Então a gente tem que tem que encarar os problemas da vida como eles vêm, né? Não é porque um é maior e outro é menor. Eu tenho esse problema. Outras pessoas têm outros. Quem sabe é maior. Nós nos sentimos muito bem em ajudar. Dá esperança de uma vida melhor para as pessoas não tem preço. As mães, os pais, quando eles nem se importam com eles, sabe? Eles querem que os filhos tenham uma, uma vida melhor. Para eles isso é uma, uma coisa melhor do que qualquer outro presente que eles podem ganhar. Não é os bens que você tem que vale alguma coisa na vida, é você continuar com as pessoas que você gosta.